Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is the 24th of January, and in the church today, we are remembering Francis de Sales, the bishop and teacher of the faith, who died in 1622, Francis de Sales. So let's pray as we start this new day. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you, God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples, above you, the Holy One appears. Uh, above you, the Holy One arises, and above you, God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendor. You shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Above you, the Holy One arises, and above you, God's glory appears. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is King. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, 
free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And our prayer, Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the con collect for Francis de Sales, Bishop of Geneva, teacher of the faith, who died in 1622. Holy God, who called your Bishop Francis de Sales to bring many to Christ through his devout life, and to renew your church with patience and understanding. Grant that we may, by word and example, reflect your gentleness and love to all we meet. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our, our psalm this morning is Psalm number 36. Psalm 36. First, the refrain. With you, O oh God, is a well of life. Sin whispers to the, to the wicked in the depths of their heart. There is no fear of God before their eyes. They flatter themselves in their own eyes that their abominable sin will not be found out. The words of their mouth are unrighteous and full of deceit. They have ceased to act wisely and to do good. They think out mischief upon their beds and have set themselves in no good way, nor do they abhor that which is evil. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness stands like the strong mountains, your justice like a great deep. You, Lord, shall save both man and beast. How precious is your loving mercy, O God. All mortal flesh shall take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They shall be satisfied with the abundance of your house. They shall drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life. And in your light shall we see light. O oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, nor the hand of the ungodly thrust me away. There are they fallen, all who work wickedness. They are cast down and shall not be able to stand. With you, O God, is the well of life. And the prayer, O God, 
the well of life. Make us bright with wisdom that we may be lightened with the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so the meditation on Psalm 36, I'm going to read. <clears throat> the, this burden of this psalm is to present a stark contrast between the empty deceitfulness of the wicked on the one hand and the enduring, solid, soul-satisfying fullness, faithfulness of the Lord on the other. David's prayer in this psalm, then, is for the Lord's faithfulness, not the evildoer's treachery to determine his life and rule. The wicked are set against him. The Lord is set for him. Who will prevail? With this psalm, David brings us with him into a renewed, settled confidence that it is the Lord who will triumph in our lives. He will care for us. He will get the last word. And in the meantime, it is in him that believers find their deepest satisfaction. Consider the imagery of this song. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Strong, shaded protection. They feast on the abundance of your house and you give them drink from the river of your delights. Verse 8. Nourishing, overflowing sustenance. With you is the fountain of life. Verse 9. Endless, inexhaustible vitality. In your light do we see light. Shining, radiant illumination. And where do we today discover these things? To be sure, as David did, in God himself. Yet for us, there is an even deeper, sharper awareness of how to access these benefits in God. We do so in union with Christ. He himself is our protection. When he said, I am the good shepherd in John 10, 11. He is our sustenance. I am the bread of life, John 6, 35. He is our vitality, John 10, 10. I came that they may have life and have it full in its fullness. And he is our illumination. I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. Amen. The psalm, as all scripture, is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, our Old Testament reading, which is uh, Hosea, Hosea chapter, chapter 4, verses 1 to 16. Hosea chapter 4, 1 to 16. Hosea chapter 4. <clears throat> Hear the word of the Lord, you Israelites, because the Lord has a charge to bring, a charge to bring against you who live in the land. There is no faithfulness, no love, no acknowledgement of God in the land. There is only cursing, lying, and murder, stealing, and adultery. They break all bounds, and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Because of this, the land dries up, and all who live in it waste away. The beasts of the field, the birds in the sky, and the fish in the sea are swept away. But let no one bring a charge, let no one accuse another. For your people are like those who bring charges against a priest. You stumble day and night, and the prophets stumble with you. So I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, 
I also reject you as my priests. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I also will ignore your children. The more priests there were, the more they sinned against me. They exchanged their glorious God for something disgraceful. They feed on the sins of my people and relish their wickedness. And it will be. Like people, like priests, I will punish both of them for their ways and repay them for their deeds. They will eat but not have enough. They will engage in prostitution but not flourish because they have deserted the Lord and give themselves to prostitution. Old wine and new wine take away their understanding. My people consult a wooden idol and a diviner's rod in speaks to them. A spirit of prostitution leads them astray. They are unfaithful to their God. They sacrifice on the mountaintops and burn offerings on the hills, under oak, poplar, and terebinth, where the shade is pleasant. Therefore, your daughters turn to prostitution and your daughters-in-law to adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they turn to prostitution, nor your daughters-in-law when they commit adultery, because the men themselves consort with harlots and sacrifice with shrine prostitutes. A people without understanding will come to ruin. Though you, Israel, commit adultery, do not let Judah become guilty. Do not go to Gilgal. Do not go up to beth -Avon. And do not swear as surely as the Lord lives. Oh, 16. The, the Israelites are stubborn like a stubborn heifer. How then can the Lord pasture them like lambs in a meadow? Ephraim is joined to idols. Leave him alone. All right, we stop there. Uh, this is 16. Yeah, on to 16. I don't know why they stop at 16, but anyway, that's where we stop this morning. Let's move on. All right, so um, God's judgment against Israel continues. Um, there, are, you know, the the this business about the lack of knowledge. The the priests lack knowledge in their worship. And because they, they don't, they, they've rejected the knowledge of God, that is the knowledge of God's laws, not just knowledge in general, but the knowledge of God's laws. They are, they, they, they do the wrong thing, basically. They, 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 and, because, and because they lack this knowledge and, and lead the people astray, the people you know, themselves then go astray. And of course, prostitution is the way God describes um, the people going after other gods and and seeking to worship other gods is prostitution or adultery, not just idolatry. All right, let's let's move to our New Testament reading, which is First Corinthians chapter ten, from verse one to thirteen. First Corinthians 10. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. They drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples to keep them from setting our hearts, to keep us 
from setting our hearts on evil things that, as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test Christ as some of them did and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Amen. All right, so Paul is drawing an analogy from the wilderness wanderings of the people uh, about God's protection for his people, but also about our, 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 our remaining steadfast and faithful, faithful to God, despite the, 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 the wilderness that we are going through. So Paul makes the point that the things that happened to our ancestors happened for um, for um, as examples to us, as warnings to us, so that we will not fall in the same in the same um, uh, the same judgment under the same judgment of God. One of the things I love about this text is how Paul um, connects the Old Testament to Christ. You know, they drank from the, the they, they drank from the rock. And the rock was Christ, you know, for the New Testament writers, sisters and brothers. Christ was there all along in the Old Testament. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's hidden, it's concealed, as St. Augustine says, it's concealed, but it's very much there. And the New Testament to reveal that, um, um, open our eyes to, to see Christ at, at all throughout the scriptures from beginning to end. So Paul here says, Christ was the rock from which they drank, and yet God was not pleased with most of them, and as a result, their bodies fell in the wilderness. Many of them died. And notice also Paul, Paul um, gives the analogy of baptism. He said, he said, when they passed through the cloud and, to the, and through the sea, it was like they were being baptized. It was, uh, they left Egypt and they went through the cloud, that is the cloud of God's presence and the and the Red Sea, and and that was their baptism. You know, I, I love that. You know, the, the sea passing through the sea was their baptism and going to the other side. So so they've left Egypt. All of this is analogous to us for us. We leave Egypt, as it were, the world. We pass through the waters, the the sea, uh, uh, the water of baptism, and we come out to the other side. But that did not change their, 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 their attitude and so on. And so they were tempted and many of them, they, they became idolaters and, and, uh, and, and, and some of them temp tested God or tempted God and, and what? The many of them died. And he said, uh, you know, in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should, we should not test Christ, he says, as some of them did and were killed by snakes. Again, drawing that, the fact that their testing of God was their testing of Christ the Lord. And, and by doing this, many of them died in the wilderness. But he says, the, 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 the word of encouragement, you could say, the word of, of hope is that no temptation has overtaken us that is the, except what is common to mankind. In other words, that none of us has ever been tempted uh, as a sort of original temptation. All of us, in all of the temptations that we go through, have been there before. Every temptation we go through is common to humanity. And, 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 and so it's not something unique to me or unique to us. 
you know, which is important, sisters and brothers, because when you're going through certain things sometimes, you think that you are the only one who has ever been through this. Um, no, um, there have been others who have gone through it and have come out the other side victorious. And so if, if they have come out victorious, so can you. But, but the only way to do this is to rely on the faithfulness of our God. So Paul says, God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. You know, that's the first thing. The first thing is God is faithful. We have a faithful God who is never going to abandon us, who's never going to leave us no matter what we go through today. And he will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. He will not give us more than he knows we can withstand. But not just that, he says. Beyond, uh, But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out that you can endure it. In other words, he will give you grace. He will give you grace. He, he, he's faithful. He's not going to abandon you. He's not going to allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. But even so, he will give you grace so that you will be able to endure it. He will provide a way out. He will provide a way of escape so that you can endure it. That, sisters and brothers, is, the, is our hope that no matter what we go through today, God is faithful. He's never going to abandon us. And he won't give us more than he knows we can bear. You know, even Job only got what he could bear. You I mean, God will not allow us to be tempted beyond a certain point. But even then, he will give us grace to withstand, to bear up so that we can endure whatever it is we are going through. That, sisters and brothers, is the faithfulness of our God. Let's pray. <clears throat> our Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We pray we thank you for this new day that you've given us. And we ask for your faithfulness to go with us today. Whatever temptations may come our way, whatever it is that we face in our, in our journey, on our journey today, on our wilderness journey today, Lord, we pray that we will be faithful to you because you are always faithful to us. And so, Lord, help us to to, to be able to, to withstand, to, to stand up under the temptations of this world. The trials that we go through in the wilderness. Lord, give us grace so that we will overcome, unlike our ancestors who fell in the wilderness. May we, by your grace, rise above the, the fray, as it were. Rise above the, the temptations and the... And, and, and the testings of our lives today. And so, Lord, give us the grace we need, the way of escape, so that we will be able to endure by your grace whatever, whatever we endure, we go through today. Whatever it is that's in our path today, Lord, we ask that you'll clear the path for us and give us strength, give us grace to be able to withstand, to stand up under the temptations and the testings of this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those in our minds and those in our hearts, in our own community. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick, those who are in hospital, those who are at home, those who are suffering in any way today, in mind and body, in, with, with aches and pains and arthritis pain and, and so on. Lord, we pray for them today. Lord, we bring their needs to you. You are, our oh Lord Jesus, the healer, the great physician, the one who heals our, our, our infirmities and forgives our sins. And so, Lord, we ask for forgiveness for all those who, who, who are suffering today. We ask for forgiveness of all our sins. And we ask that you will bring healing to bodies and minds today. So, Lord, we entrust our, those who are on our hearts to you today, those we know in our own community, those in our families even, 
in those in our, in our, in our society at large. We pray for the, the NHS and for the doctors and nurses and carers who work tirelessly to, to help to bring healing and wholeness and health and strength and relief and comfort to those who are sick. And so, Lord, hear our prayer for the, the carers, the nurses, the doctors, and all those who work in the, in the caring industry for the well-being of others. We pray for those nurses and ambulance drivers who are, in, who are currently in dispute with the government over pay and conditions. We, we pray, Lord, that their situation will be resolved favorably soon and that, Lord, Lord, they will be able to get back to their work and to do what they are called to do, which is to serve and to seek the well-being of others. And so, Lord, we pray that you will give, uh, give compassion to the government so that they will be able to meet the, the, these, these demands these, these requests from the nurses and ambulance drivers somewhere so that this, these, these disputes will be resolved favorably, Lord, we pray. And so, Lord, we ask um, for your intervention in so many other disputes in our country at this time, not just the ambulance, but uh, many others who are... Who are uh, on strike because of pay and conditions, Lord, we ask that you will hear our prayer to for 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 a, uh, a speedy resolution to these matters. And we pray this in Jesus' name, Amen. We pray, O oh Lord, for the world, and we continue to remember the people of Ukraine and the the the. the the war that they are enduring at this time in their lives. Lord, our God, bring an end to the war, we pray. You, you break the, the weapons of war. You, you break the bows and shatters the spear. You, O oh Lord, bring peace. You alone, O oh Lord, bring peace to nations and, and bring judgment upon those who perpetrate violence, who perpetrate war, who perpetrate hatred and animosity against others. And so, Lord, we call upon you and we call upon you on behalf of the Ukrainian people. And we pray that you'll hear their cry, hear our cry for them, we pray, and bring relief, bring an end to this war, bring peace with their neighbor, Russia, we pray. And so, Lord, all this and, we, and so many other places in our world where there is conflict, where there is hate, where there is uh, where there's division, Lord, we pray, bring hope, bring healing, bring peace. We pray for your church. We pray, especially as we remember this week, we're praying for the unity of the church and this church that is divided by East and West and so many others in, in between. And so, Lord, we ask for uh, uh, unity in your church, that you will heal the divisions of our church. Lord, where, uh, where some claim to be for Paul and Apollos and Cephas and, and even Christ, and, and yet, oh God, your scripture says you are not divided. We are called to be one in the body of Christ. And so, Lord, we pray that you will reconcile your people, all those who truly name the name of Christ. May we be one may, and there be no divisions among us. Lord, we pray for this unity in your worldwide church, that as your people, we will be, we will be united against the one common enemy, the devil himself. And so, Lord, we pray that you will strengthen your church. We pray for you, the, the persecuted believers all over the world, but especially those in northern Nigeria, in central Nigeria, whose lives have up upended every day, as it were, because of the those who hate them 
and those who seek to destroy their faith in their homes and their community. So Lord, have mercy on the persecuted Christians, we pray, throughout the world and in northern Nigeria. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in, this, in times of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all those who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you and watch over you. May the Lord grant you his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers, along your journey. May the Lord strengthen you. May the faithfulness of God be with you in all you do today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.